So I thought I'd make an announcement uh, before I begin my homily because someone approached me. Uh, if you want to get into the Adoration Chapel, it's not over here anymore. It's right here in the library. And if you go through that confessional into the library, uh, that's the Adoration Chapel. And so it only makes sense since that's where the Blessed Sacrament is, our Eucharistic Lord, that we would use that door over here, not the door over here that normally gets us into the chapel. So if you have a key fob to get into the adoration chapel, it's not going to work over here. We turned that door off for you, and we turned this door on because we're going to put a construction equipment in the chapel, uh, and we're going to remodel it uh, using Witness to Hope funds, the money uh, you gave uh, for the Witness to Hope fundraiser for the bishop. Uh, he's given back to us and so that we can remodel the chapel and make it just even more beautiful uh, than ever. And so if you do use the Adoration Chapel, uh, your key fob will work in the door up here by this confessional by the library uh, now. So um, that's going to be one of those construction frustrations for a couple of months. And then uh, hopefully it'll just be a huge blessing uh, when the chapel's uh, finished. Uh, more dignity, more beauty. Uh, hopefully more worship and prayer going on over there. So um, today we're, Jesus goes out into the desert, uh, the Old Testament, we're in the garden, and uh, what one preacher said, Lent is a time of just getting back to the basics. I was looking at an old homily I gave, and I had mentioned that Cindy was playing praise and worship music on her guitar in the house, and I was just being really blessed by it. And then she kind of stopped. And uh, I asked her, and she said, I, I haven't I've been enjoying my music the last couple of days because I've been out of tune. Yeah, and so <laughs> being out of tune, it's, Lent is a time for all of us to tune up. If you've ever watched musicians, they'll write in the middle of a song, st stop, and they'll be tuning because they're out of tune, and it's, it's not so enjoyable when we're out of tune and, as opposed to being in tune. So this is kind of a time for tune-up. Uh, we tune up everything in our lives. We get back to basics and everything in our lives. And one of the back-to-basics thing is not just that God is love, like we gave in my talk uh, Thursday. I hope you either watched it or were able to make it. Uh, but God is love, and since God is love... God can't stop loving because God is love. God can't love sometimes and hate sometimes depending on how you behave. God just loves you all the time, not because of what you do or don't do, but because God is love. And so God is life. And so God says, I, I came that you might have life. The Bible says that God so loves the world that he sent Jesus. And Jesus came that we might have life and love. Now, uh, there's a teaching I was listening to a homily a couple weeks ago, and uh, the guy reminded me of this teaching called uh, deification. Uh, the church actually preaches or teaches that Jesus came to make you become all that God is. That's where it's called deification. You being deified, becoming divine. Except you'll always be the creature, God will always be the creator. But otherwise, uh, the Bible says God's given you God's nature, God's divine nature. You now are what the Bible says are partakers of God's divine natures. Jesus came to deify you, to make you into divinity. And that's why when God says love perfectly, love as God loves, love as God who is love itself, God's turning you into love itself. That's why Jesus came into the world. That's why when God says, be perfect with your love, that is, love even your enemies. Love even those who are unlovable to other people. Love the way God loves. Love like you are love itself, because that's what Jesus came for, was to change us into God. And God, he became, God became us as a human being, so we could become what God is. It's this great, beautiful exchange. And so knowing all that, uh, and knowing that we're entering into Lent, 
uh, I was remembering Father Swyatt once. I was over at the school over here at Holy Family, and Father Swyatt was talking to the kids, and he asked them, uh, you know what those ashes, that stuff we just, you know what that stuff we just put on your head? It was Ash Wednesday. You know that stuff we just put on your head? You know what that is? And one kid says, dirt. <laughs> And Father Swyatt so just went with it. He goes, yeah, yeah. And what do you do with dirt? And one, another kid says, you grow stuff in it. And he says, yeah, that's what, why we put dirt on ourselves. So we can grow in that. We can use that to help us to grow in the things of God. So one of the things we're really called to do uh, in this time is to grow in the things of God in the things of life. Uh, 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 Irenaeus says, God's never more glorified than by the life uh, really lived, fully lived. And so God wants you most of all to be alive and to live. And that's our mission. But there's another mission that Jesus begins today, doesn't he? He's been baptized. They didn't mention that in the gospel, but it was just before this part. And, and God said, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved son. I love him a lot. I love him so much, I'm going to send him out in the desert with the devil. <laughs> yeah, whoa. Yeah. Every time God says to Jesus, you are my beloved son, uh, there's only twice in the, in the gospel. The other time, once he sends him out to the desert where the devil is, and this next time, he sends him to Jerusalem to die. He's up on the mountain of transfiguration, and when he comes down, he's talking to his disciples, I'm going to Jerusalem, and they're going to mistreat me, and, and uh, the leaders and the scribes and all these people, and they're going to crucify me, and on the third day, I'll rise from the dead. And so uh, one of the things about God's love for you, you are God's beloved. You know that, right? You are God's beloved. So when you hear God call you beloved, you know one thing, he wants you to be alive. That's the whole thing, the whole thing about your, your being here is just wake out of your sleep, get out of the stupor, come alive, truly alive all the time. But the other thing is love, when you're God's beloved, God sends you on mission. God sends you into the world with that, with that divinity that he's put inside of you, with that love, with that life and all that sort of thing. And there's things that make us uh, not alive. There's things that just deaden us in this world. And so we'll cover those in the garden that Jesus encounters those. But I want to talk about, I mean, into the desert. I want to talk about the garden first because the Old Testament talks about God placing us in the garden. And in the garden, you know, there's, there's trees. And you know the teaching on trees, right? You know what God said about the trees? What did God say about the trees? He said, eat of all of them. Remember? <laughs> what do we think God said about the trees? Don't eat. <laughs> we think God is a God of don't eat. Well, yeah, one that's going to deaden you. Just one. He said, eat all of them. I gave you all these. I want you to eat like all of them. And uh, just, just one is not going to be good for you. So don't eat the one that's really bad for you. Don't eat that one. Uh, so this God, uh, I think it was Chesterton or something, said this, because we think of it as this great prohibition, don't eat of the tree of right and wrong or whatever, uh, but what Chesterton calls it is the great permission. God gives us a great permission to really live life, to eat everything, to eat all the trees. Well, there's one, there's one do you see what I'm saying here? We focus on God being this grumpy old uh, God who says, yeah, I don't want you doing anything. That's exactly wrong. God wants you doing everything, billions of things. Just don't do one thing. Don't do the things that make your soul die. Don't do the one thing that takes life out of you. Do those things billion things that make you fully, truly alive and blessed. So first of all, God wants you to have a lot of life. Now out in the garden, uh, Jesus goes out there and uh, Satan tempts him and said, uh, turn those stones into bread. And so the first temptation has to do with um, our soul. 
just those, those things about our soul like eating or pleasure or sexuality or any of those other types of things, uh, sensualities, nothing wrong with those. God's fine with those. What God doesn't want us to do is like in the garden, uh, the tree that he said, don't eat of that tree, is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he didn't want us to do what all of us do. He didn't want us to make ourselves the criterion for good and evil. We all know what's good, what makes me feel good. We all know what's evil, what hurts me. <laughs> and we make ourselves that criterion. That's what God was saying, and don't eat of that tree. He said, don't make yourself the criterion for good and evil. I was watching a show and this ranch owner, he owned a big ranch. He said to his son or something who was talking about right and wrong, talking about politics, about ranches and all that. And he says, there is no right and wrong. <laughs> There's just what's good for our ranch and what's bad for our ranch. And that's all. You do what's good for our ranch, and you fight everyone who does what's bad for our ranch. And so he made his ranch the criterion on what's right and what's wrong. And that's what the human heart does, and that's what causes all the problems in the world. God is the criterion for what's right and what's wrong. Not me, not you, not us, not our selfishness, not our own perspectives. It has nothing to do with us. That's why God doesn't want us to go there, because that's what destroys our life. And remember, it was one tree. And God said, you can eat of all the trees. Remember the, the serpent tried to lie? The serpent said, did God really say you can't eat any of the trees? Yeah, that's... What the world tells us, yeah, God's all grumpy, God's all controlling, God's all, all hung up on everything. He doesn't want you to eat of any of the trees. No, that's not the truth. God wants you to eat of all the trees. God put them all there for us to be blessed. So turn those stones into bread. Well, that's our sensuality. Nothing wrong with uh, eating, nothing wrong with drinking bread, wine, nothing wrong with sex and sexuality. Uh, just if you make these things God, if you make these things the criteria of your life, then you're going to be a mess and you're going to have all kinds of problems and, and difficulties and sadness in your life. And then he takes him on the parapet of this temple. Uh, that's the highest point in the Jewish religion, in the Jewish cultural life, it's like the place of honor. It would be, if you're in that highest place, it's like honor, and it has to do with our egos and our honor. If we make me being honored the criterion for life, for me, my ego being the criterion for life, we're going to create all kinds of trouble, even more than the first one. Uh, and so uh, we can't make ourselves the criterion for good and evil. It's got to be God's goodness and beauty and life and love in us. And the third thing, he says, you know, I'll, I'll give you all the kingdoms. What's that? Power. He saves power for last. Yeah, because we all feel like we don't have any and we all want a lot of power. But if we make that power, which is, there's nothing wrong with power. There's nothing wrong with the ability to do good in the world. Use that power to do good and to live life fully and and all that. So the same is true with all the other things, to live life fully. All these things are ours to live. It's just we can't make them the criterion for our life, the God of our life. And so Jesus says, no, no, um, God alone will you worship. God alone will you serve. That's what we've call, been called to. We've been called to full, happy lives. We've been called to embrace all of life, the richness of our lives, and to come fully alive, to love fully. You know, there's a Bible verse that says, the world will know you are Christians by what? By your love for one another. Not by your fasting, not by... Uh, ashes on your head, not by anything else, although they kind of help when you go into Starbucks with a, you forget you have this big thing on your head. Uh, of course, I wear black shirts with these on them. But uh, no, they'll know you, you are a Christian by love because God is love. 
God is love. By the way, that's a great evangelistic tool. Uh, we all have people in our lives that say, I don't believe in God anymore. Okay? Well, what God are you not believing in? Because I don't think I believe in the God you're not believing in either. Who would believe in that God that you're not believing in? Right? I wouldn't believe in a God that you don't believe in because uh, what a dumb God that would be. So uh, God is love. I like to say to people, have you ever had love? Do you ever love anybody or anything? Yeah, because God is love. And everyone says, yeah, you know. Everyone has someone to love, whether it's our kids or our parents or, or somebody in our life, even if it was just that dog that loves me more than anyone else, right? We've all felt love for someone or something, right? God is love, and that love is God. I'm like, that's your experience of God right there. Everyone in the whole world has experiences of God, tons of them by the love that they have in their own heart, in their own lives. And so when we get the right view of God, that he wants us to be fully alive and that he's love, then we, it's easy to talk to people about God. And they're like, well, if that's God, I would, I, would, I would believe in that God. That is God. That is our God. And yeah, that's the one we believe in. And so we follow all the other things just so we can all gather in one place and be doing the same thing uh, and worshiping in a beautiful way. This is a great day just to kind of um, get back to the basics. Get tuned up. Just let go of those things that don't bring life into our lives, that don't bring love into our lives, and to re-embrace those things that make us feel fully alive, truly alive. This is the basics of our faith. God telling us, eat of all of the trees, except one that will ruin your life. Don't eat any of any of those kind of things. Don't eat that stuff. Don't be consumers. Don't consume stuff that destroys. Eat life. And that's what we're going to do in a minute, right here. We're going to eat life. That's our faith, Thorson Summit, and what a wonderful faith we have.